Hello and welcome back to Think Wonky. Today I'm going to be showing you one of my favourite things to do and that is to make gift stickers using Photoshop. For today's episode I'm going to show you one of the simplest ways in which you can do this and that is using the Burst Photos feature on your phone. The Burst Photos feature is really simple. You essentially take a string of photos in a short amount of time. On the iPhone, when you set your phone to countdown it automatically takes a string of 10 photos. As you can see, I was quite busy. To make your gift stickers, it's much easier if you take all your pictures with a plain background and preferably try to keep all your body parts within the frame. So this image, for example, I cannot use. If I select it, you can see that although the effect is quite good, my elbows go out of the shot. This one, however, boring. This one, however, is fine. So let's start by selecting all of these images and sending them to my computer. Okay, so you know which pictures you're going to use. Next, you need to import them into Photoshop. You can either open the files up individually into different tabs, which is a bit of a long way around, or you can load them into stacks. Let me show you what I mean. Open up Photoshop and create new file. It doesn't actually matter which size you open up at this time, but I recommend RGB colour with a resolution of 75 pixels with this colour profile. And click Create. Your document will open up into your workspace, whichever kind of workspace you typically use. So it might look different to mine and that's okay. If I'm using specific things that you can't see, I will show you how to find them. To open up your images into one workspace, go to File, Scripts, and load files into stack. Once you come here, you can browse for the particular file that you need. Uh, mine are all on my computer. Be sure to add all of the images that you want to use in your GIF sticker. Once you've located your source files, click OK, and you will see all of your files loading up beautifully in your layers panel. At this point, if you really wanted to, you can edit the pictures and improve the coloring, just making sure that obviously each color profile matches for each picture. But for the purposes of today's tutorial, I'm just going to keep it simple. One thing I do advise is to name or label each layer. Since each layer is going to be an individual frame, I recommend labeling the layers with either numbers or letters so that you can place them in order. As you can see, I've relabeled mine 1 to 10 in my layers panel. One thing that I have noticed is that once I try to animate these files, they'll often upload into my timeline in reverse order. And I still don't know a quick way to flip everything the other way around. If you know, please let me know in the comments. My personal workaround is to reverse all of the layers before I begin. There you go, now my layers are 10987654321. If I were to just be making a GIF, this would probably be enough. However, I want a sticker. That means that I want each image to have a transparent background. The quickest and easiest way to do this is to come to your properties. The greatest thing about GIFs and stickers is that they do not need to be absolutely perfect. In fact, part of their appeal is the fact that they are not perfect. So, come to your properties. If you do not have your properties panel open, go to window, scroll down and select properties. Once your properties panel is open, scroll all the way down to the bottom where you will see quick actions. There's a possibility where quick actions will be blank. If it is, you just click the little arrow to open up a couple of options, including view background, remove background, and select subject. In this case, we're just going to remove the background and we're gonna do the same for each of the layers. Ta-da! As you'll see right now, each of these layers is open. If I want to turn a layer off, I just click the eye and I can see the layer beneath it. So I can remove each of these to see all of the layers in action and then turn them back on again. Now let's animate. You'll notice my workspace is already set up for animating images because down at the bottom here, I have this timeline panel open. If you don't already have the timeline panel open, again, you just go to window, scroll down here and select timeline. Once you have your timeline, you come to this button in the middle, you'll see a couple of options. You can either create video timeline or create frame animation. For this style, we're going to go for create frame animation and click 
Once you do that, you'll notice that your timeline opens up with one frame with all of your layers in one. To create your animation, go to the top right hand corner of your timeline and click the hamburger menu icon. Now select make frames from layers. Voila! If you press play, you've created your sticker. A couple of things that you might want to consider. One, you might want to slow things down. If you do, come to each frame and underneath you will see the default is set to zero seconds. So there is no delay between frames. If however, you want to create a delay between frames to slow it down, you can just come down here and you can select your frame delay. So let's change each one to 0.1 seconds and see how it looks. This is a much slower vibe. It's possible, however, that you are quite happy for it to go at the regular speed or to go slow, but you want one particular frame to stand out, in which case you can make just one frame slower than the rest. In this case, I have selected the last frame and changed it to 0.2 seconds. Let's take a look. However, I have to say this particular sticker works really well just with zero delay between the frames. To export your file, go to File, scroll down to Export, go to Save for Web and make sure that it is set to GIF. You'll notice that the image size is quite large because we uploaded the pictures at full size. For a GIF, you don't need a large size. In fact, a smaller size is preferable. A good rule of thumb is somewhere between 500 to 800 pixels. So let's go with 600 pixels today and click save. Give your file a name. Let's call it dancing. Oops, dancing and save. Don't forget to also save your file in Photoshop. You can use Command and S or you can just come to file and save. Now the beautiful thing about doing something like this is that you can actually create a whole series of GIFs from this single sticker. For example, if I wanted a disco effect, I come to my first frame, I add a layer and I just place it behind that first frame and I'm going to create three layers. And for each layer, I'm going to change the color. So let's say layer one will go with yellow and we just come with the paint bucket tool here on the right and then just color in the layer and you'll see that all of the frames have become yellow. If I want to change the color again to something different, let's go with this color here. Now we've got green and if I want to change the final color, I can go with red. You'll see that at the bottom, all of the frames have become red. If you remember earlier, I talked about turning on layers on and off, and this is a really useful feature when creating GIFs and stickers. Let me show you what I mean. Let's imagine frames one, two, and three, I want to remain red. I can just keep things as they are, but maybe frames four, five, and six, I want them to be green. So what I do is I turn off the red and maybe frames seven, eight, nine, and 10, I'd like them to be yellow. Oops. So I turn off the two layers above. Now, when I press play, I have a disco GIF. You can use the same strategy to add in other elements, other parts, text, or whatever it is that you want in your GIF sticker. So go, be creative and have fun. If this was useful or enjoyable in any way, please give me a like. And to be sure to see more content as it comes out, click subscribe.